Welcome back from a different part of the world. All the way to the other side. <laughs> We're seeing you in the future. Very on brand. Yeah, it is the future. It's so crazy to think about. Wow. How does it, how does it feel being in Tuesday? Uh, feels like a Tuesday. <laughs> three favorite booksellers. I'm Lauren. I'm Carlos. I'm Rose. What did we read this time around? We read The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schreffer. I was gonna say Schreffer. <laughs> Schreffer? Schreffer? Schreffer. By Elliot Schreffer. S. Two boys alone in space. After the first settler on Titan trips her distress signal, neither remaining country on Earth can afford to scramble a rescue of its own. And so two sworn enemies are installed in the same spaceship. Ambrose wakes up on the coordinated endeavor with no memory of a launch. Evidence indicates strangers have been on board. The ship's operating system is voiced by his mother and his handsome, brooding shipmate has barricaded himself away. In order to survive the ship's secrets, Ambrose and Kodiak will need to work together to learn to trust one another, especially once they discovered what they are truly up against. Love might be the only way to survive. Ooh, steamy. I kept wanting to call, I know his name is Kodiak, but I kept wanting to call him Klondike. I don't know why. <laughs> Klondike! What? Because he's delicious, like a Klondike bar. Please. <laughs> Klondike bar sponsor us, please. <laughs> oh my god, imagine. I know. So on Goodreads, it does have a 4.33 and 13,800 mm. ratings. That's pretty good. That is really good. And we're going to do the first maybe like 10 minutes as no spoilers. But Carlos and I had already read this. And so Rose, I'm interested to hear what your kind of first impression was. Without any spoilers, I loved it. Um, I... Here's the thing. I had no expectations because all I knew was like little things that you and Carlos had told me. I did not read the synopsis before reading this. So I didn't actually know. Does she ever? No. Do I ever? No, I don't. <laughs> so I wouldn't blind. And it like the vibes it gave me were like smart house slash the 100. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that smart house. I'm dead. Were you okay. not getting smart house from this? No, but I mean, I guess. Oh my God. What's her name? Patty? <laughs> yeah. Or something. Yeah. I literally pictured the OS. That's what it was. Her voice. As Patty. Yeah, it was like smart house slash the 100 slash xenon you know definitely gay xenon love that yes it's definitely one of those books that you have to go in blind because the twist is just so unexpected yeah when okay when like the whole middle section because carlos was like 50 percent, 50 percent. i was like okay so i get to that whole like middle section i'm like i had to go back and reread <laughs> yeah. what, yeah. what is happening right now <laughs> now did you actually physically read it or did you audiobook it I did both. So I read on my iPad and then I had like the audio going along, like highlighting it. Yeah. The second time around, I also did audio for it. And I actually really liked the audio. I like the narrator a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked a Kodiak's accent. Yeah, the accent for Kodiak was good. I liked how even just from the beginning, just Ambrose like waking up because he wakes up on the ship. OS is like talking to him and his mom's voice and like trying to jog his memory. And I feel like I was really suspicious from the beginning. Not not that I could have even dreamed of what the, the plot twist was because that was just insanity. But like from the get-go, just the whole rescue mission to save Minerva, his sister, I was like... I don't know. Yeah, when I f read it the first time, I did. I feel like I didn't notice it as fast. But obviously, reading it the second time, I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I caught it on way sooner. That's why I just thought Smart House. Like as soon as OS started talking, I was like, "There's, there's something going on here." Like I, a little sussy. I was, yeah, she was very sus. Just 
I don't know. She felt secretive from the beginning. I was like, girl, what are you hiding? Right. Well, and two, I thought from the very beginning, like when we're first introduced to OS, the the relationship that Ambrose and OS had, I was like, is OS kind of like a girly pop? Like, do I love OS? (laughs) But then I was like... I switch teams. I'm like, absolutely not. I am not a fan of OS as much. Uh, something I do want to say for the non-spoiler part, I do think the book is very mismarketed. The cover feels very YA and obviously like mm-hmm. it's shelved in YA, but I feel like it could definitely be adult. Like I feel like if someone, if you saw it in a bookstore, like in the YA section, you would not expect it to be like what it is. Not with the cover. Uh-uh. I would say, and especially a lot of the themes of this book, like once you pass that 50, that magic 50% mark, once you pass that, the theme is very like uh, philosophical. Yeah, it does get pretty dark. Some of the humor and some of the some of the interactions did seem very young adult just with Kodiak and Ambrose. So I feel like if those were made to be a little bit more adult then this could have very easily been put in the adult area but they're just little two teens in love you guys they're just teening it up right. teen it up. <laughs> <laughs> our youths they are our youth well kind of they're kind i was of gonna say oh oh <laughs> god I I feel like if we actually had like scenes with the mom that I would have hated her, but I also just find it hilarious that she paid to have her surrogate have like Alexander the Great's DNA. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Right? I love that. Not the designer children. (laughs) (laughs) He says that like his mom did that for all of her children. Like she just has like so many offspring not from her body but with her dna mixed with other great men of the of the world but i love how specifically him and minerva are more sibling than the rest of them specifically because they both come from alexander the great yeah it definitely had a lot of humor there's a lot of funny moments with ambrose you're alone on this ship and you're just like a teenager and you find him doing very teenager things. <laughs> oh my gosh, literally. Ambrose is like in a serious situation and he's like, I think I'm feeling kind of horny. <laughs> like, Ambrose, please. As soon as he finds out Kodiak's a guy, he's like, well, I want I want to fuck him. He's like, he kept his window open today. Think he wants to bang. I'm like, <laughs> that's me. Just delusional. <laughs> But it was like a slow burn, which I appreciated. It wasn't like just because they were the only two people on the ship that Kodiak right away was like, you're right. I love you. Let's do this. It was very much like. Yeah, it took a while. You don't even find out right away that he likes guys, you know? Yeah, like the progression makes sense. Even with like all the crazy stuff that goes on, I still liked it. Oh, also like that gave very like the good place have you guys seen the good place without we're still in non-spoilers but i'll explain later we already spoiled that it has a crazy plot twist not that that's really like a big spoiler but like definitely on that same level of the good place so people liked that plot twist they're gonna love this one they yeah definitely oh my god when he changes he changes the voice of the operating system to piss off kodiak (laughs) He like changes it like this and like oh that was so funny the narrator did such a good job with that i loved it <laughs> and what was it he was like i want you to be so broody and because it was like with their version of like a like an idol right or something like mm-hmm. that it was still weird that he kept it at his mom but i know he said there was like hundreds of different options and he just kept it as his mom even though like his mom didn't really raise him it was interesting that he felt comfort in that yeah because they definitely had from what he described like a troubled relationship she wasn't like a nurturer Mm -hmm. i feel like where i noticed that things were kind of not what they seemed was when as soon as he was like kind of lagging and just like enjoying being on the ship with kodiak they received the sos from that titan planet or moon oh right was titan a moon or a planet titan was the it's a moon Oh, I thought Titan was like the ship. What's the ship called? Endeavor. 
No, like um, Minerva's ship she was supposed to be. Well, she wasn't on a ship anymore. Her ship landed on Titan. That was Saturn's moon. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then that's when they had gotten the message from Titan, and it was like an SOS signal from Minerva being like, you have to get here quick. I was like, mm -hmm. mm, do they? Or what's going on here? <laughs> a little sussy. Super sus. I think there was a time earlier than that. I don't remember exactly when. I think it was when they were eating. And I forgot what happened, but Kodiak didn't want to speak out loud with OS there. Yeah, when did they create the safe room? The blind room? Was it before that message? No, it was definitely after. And then that makes me want to know why Kodiak right away didn't want to say things in front of the operating system although i guess he had quite a different training regimen than ambrose did so maybe he was just kind of trained to be less trusting straight off the bat and it didn't help that ambrose's mom's voice was os's voice so maybe he was like kind of too trusting straight away yeah i think it was when when ambrose mentioned like that os had lied it was about something mm. so small i don't know what it was but it was like a human thing that she did and that's when i was like AI lying? Okay. That's when I was suspicious. I don't know when that happened, but. Because wasn't it? She was like, a, she got offended. She got offended by something. And he was like, well, you can't get offended because you don't have emotions. Oh. And she like hesitated. And she was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess I don't have emotions. <laughs> beep, bop, boop, beep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I think you're right. And that was pretty early on. But we needed that so that the reader could also start, you know, getting suspicious as well. Because, ooh, because it just gets so good. Okay, I feel like we can go into spoilers now, right? Yes, for sure. The second time reading it was, I feel like, even better. Yeah, no, I agree. Just to continue from kind of the blind room, they start being suspicious of OS and they're like, well, we don't want to talk anywhere where she can hear us. And there's like this cute little bot named Rover who's very C-3PO or R2-D2 vibes, but like- R2-D2 vibes, yeah. R2-D2 vibes, but he's kind of like a little shit. All right. <laughs> he is. He's like annoying. Um, but they like jam his track on the floor so that he can't like go into the room either. And that's where they listen to this like radio signal that basically says- that they're like 6,000 years or something yeah, in, the in the future. Well, the first one I think was like 142, right? 140. No, it was definitely more than that. I think it was definitely more than that. Are you sure for the first one? Yeah, I think it was because if I remember, I think they said that there had already been like four or five. Oh, we haven't talked about this. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay oh this is why i thought 142 this concludes our broadcast for today tuesday march 27th in the year 142 of this era of uranium 2615 common era and do they say how many years it's more than 140 years into the future because I think they figure it out gradually. They listen to another one and they're like, well, wait, this one says that we're like a thousand years into the future or something. Yeah. And then it just keeps getting like crazier and crazier. And then Ambrose kind of has like this mental break where he's like, wait, then that would mean that Minerva's dead. And if Minerva's dead, then like, what the hell are we doing doing this mission? Like, what is this mission? Like, what's the point? And OS is like, if you let me in, I can help you. And they're like, let no, bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the mental break first? Is it Kodiak? Um, the, like the first time? This is still pre-meat bags. Yeah. Pre-first death. Yeah, we'll talk about the meat bags in a moment. But I think it's Ambrose that has the mental break. But then Kodiak is the one that like really goes off the deep end yeah i think it it might be ambrose because it's when he realizes that his sister isn't alive anymore so then he's like what the fuck yeah but then like i feel like ambrose is like ha ha it's just a prank it's, it's just a prank and kodiak's like leave get out of here <laughs> cool joke <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ambrose just keeps replaying that message from his sister. I think he kind of finds a little bit of comfort in that. And then he's like, okay, okay, okay. Let's regroup. Let me just talk to Kodiak. Well, Kodiak in the other room has just been like, ah! 
<laughs> totally losing his fucking marbles. <laughs> we should talk about the meat bags, right? Go into the meat yeah. bags. Because that, that was the part I had to reread. The meat bags? As soon as he said a face, I was like, a face? What are you talking about? I re- I went back and reread it like three times. I was like, is happening here so please introduce these so good these juicy meat bags <laughs> oh god it's disgusting so there was a door to part of the ship and this giant door looked like it was beat to hell had blood on it and they were like what the hell like how how does this door oh, have yeah, blood yeah. on it if you and i both just woke up you know like this is mm-hmm. just the start of our mission so how is something on the ship already fucked up time passes but their suspicions keep rising and they finally get into this little terminal within the spaceship os is trying so hard not to get them into this area to the point where the little bot rover comes up and electrocutes one of them i think it was kodiak yeah yeah i think you're right he's like get the fuck away from this door and ambrose is like (laughs) no and he like zero gravity (laughs) floats over and something catches his eye and it's this like rose said couldn't have said it better myself this juicy meat bag and they're like There are multiple and they're hanging up basically on this like circular coat rack. And as he gets closer, he sees a face and the face just so happens to be his. But what I did realize this time reading it was that they don't reveal that it's them until the second time. The second, yeah. So after the first death, we still don't know what those bags are. Yeah, because Ambrose is just like, there are bodies in there. There are bodies in there. And Mm -hmm. Kodiak's like are we sure? And Ambrose is like, I'm super sure. And that's when Kodiak goes to check. And he's like, okay, Ambrose, like you have to come see this. Ambrose follows in after him. And then it's this big reveal that there are clones of Ambrose and Kodiak together on this like meat fridge. Yeah. And then our lovely little Kodiak has a menti B, a little bit of a menti B, and he does kill himself and also ambrose right i think that's the second no 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 that's the second time the first time the way they die they're trying to set up a radio to get signal and he goes outside to try to like set it up but os is like like what are you doing you don't have any tasks to do out there and she kind of catches on and she like unlatches his thing and he goes flying off into space and then i think ambrose Ambrose goes after him or something, right? Or does she kind of just open the door and Ambrose also goes flying out and dies? I think she opened the door. Yeah, she opens the door, right? He was like trying to hold on, but he couldn't. Oh, right, right. And then that's when he like woke up again. And that's what I was like, what is, what? Yeah, like the book just restarts. Yeah, it was before the faces were revealed. And then I'm like, okay, yes, I'm finally to part two because this book also like doesn't have chapters which was very different. It's broken up into major parts, but then each like chapter break is just like how many maintenance tasks are less. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, part two. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. And it just like repeats what happened on page one. I was like, didn't I already read this? What is going on? Like I had to go check my audio too. I was like, is there a glitch? (laughs) What's happening? (laughs) I love that. The best part about it is when I picked up this book, I also had no idea what it was about. But I think I had just finished reading They Both Die at the End. So I wanted another like sci-fi two guy romance. And I just saw it like just on the shelf and I picked it up and I was like, you know what? I'm going to read this. And yeah, it like blew my mind when I read it the first time. It was crazy. The plot twists don't even stop there. Like that is just kind of like the main reveal after the first Kodiak and Ambrose die. Well, the first that you're introduced to. Then it starts to part two. It's so interesting to see how each clone figures out what's going on because, I mean, they're not able to completely fix the ship to what it was before. So like right. us reading about Kodiak and Ambrose making the blind room. Now these new clones wake up 
and the blind room just exists. And so they're like, why would there be a room like this where OS can't hear us? So they kind of figure it out faster than the other ones because they're like, ah, okay, something real weird is here. Yeah, I think the second pair that we see, that's the one where Kodiak goes super crazy and starts like punching the wall, right? And then he ends up killing Ambrose. And then I don't know how... Does he kill himself as well? I think he does. When do they like download? I, I'm imagining it's like a like a Binton bracelet. I know it's probably not, but <laughs> when do they download that OS? <laughs> oh, OS Prime. Yeah, I, I imagined it more like an iPad. Oh, really? I'm like I'm like picturing Binton's <laughs> bracelet. <laughs> yeah, and they're like typing on. <laughs> I don't know. That might be like the third. Oh, it's the third time. Okay. Around there. Because I remember like that had a big part like towards the end. Each time a clone pair dies, it just kind of restarts where the book literally started from page one, but not in an annoying way. Not where you're like, oh my God, I don't want to read this again because it really doesn't like brush up on it too much, but it's just to kind of show the reader like what's happening. And I just thought that that was brilliant and i feel like it made it like new enough they they went on a different type of journey each time and i liked how their reaction was different depending on how they found they find out that they're clones like each time they wake up i feel like they find out in a different way and they react different to the scenario and they kind of go through a good amount of them doing that because there's one where doesn't like kodiak come in and like slit ambrose's throat or is that rover it's rover i was gonna say i was like (laughs) yeah and i think it's recorded too so the next ambrose sees it and he's like super scared of of rover yeah and could we touch on that because i'm pretty sure he was about to like jerk off when he came across (laughs) that video oh yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) and then he was like (laughs) <laughs> the, yeah it was like the video with the audio <laughs> I was like oh my god but I mean consistency is key every Ambrose was just like guys I'm horny out here like literally he always had his hand in his pants I was like <laughs> and they looked up the same video but it seemed like Ambrose was always in every clone version it seemed like he was a little bit more headstrong than Kodiak was yes well I feel like Kodiak in general is just like more reserved because his training was different maybe Ambrose grew up in a society that was very much um well first of all he went to the Cusk Academy which is literally his last name he was very comfortable with his sexuality whereas Kodiak kind of grew up what was his called the Democratia Democratia oh Democratia yeah yeah Democratia so he was a Democratian soldier and all of the soldiers are orphans so they never know who their parents are and they're kind Mm -hmm. of they have a, a little bit of a colder upbringing So maybe that's why Kodiak flies off the handle a little bit more easily. I don't know. Yeah. But he always seemed to have the worst reaction to being a little cloney baloney. I know. He would either, I feel like he would either like just shut down or like freak out. Like kill himself. Destroy everything. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's like, nope. (laughs) And OS Prime is the one that explains to them what their kind of like purpose in life is, right? Because OS never does. Correct. So like they had their their DNA, like their little embryos and stuff like made into all these clones, right? And I mean, Minerva, she's been presumed dead for... Oh, she's hella dead. Yeah, yeah. for a long time before this even happened. And so... They were sent on this mission to, like, go to another place that they could inhabit and make life, right? To essentially save the human race. Yeah. Yes. They were the chosen ones to try and rebuild human life on a different Mm -hmm. planet. But in order to do so, they needed to obviously travel a very, very, very long time thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So how are we going to accomplish this? Basically, throughout the time that the ship is in space, it only needs to be maintained a little bit. And so they wake up these Mm -hmm. clones to be little janitors for this ship. And so they clean up the ship, fix all the little problems. And then as soon as they're done, 
then the ship kills them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ship just keeps gliding through space for more years, more thousands of years or however long. And then yeah. once the ship has enough damages again, then they wake up the new set of clones, fix the ship, so on and so forth. Except for now, the clones are self-aware because they're smart. Right. There aren't enough resources on the ship Basically, because isn't there like so much radiation that they would just get cancer and die anyway? Yeah. yeah. And they have to continue to like recycle like the oxygen and like. That would affect the end goal of the last clones to be able to get to this new planet and rebuild life. It's crazy. <laughs> it's such a cool concept. It is because you have to think like putting yourself in that position, if you're not the last clones, then you're literally just a stepping stone to achieve this goal. And it's like you have to battle with, am I going to accept that or am I going to rebel? Yeah. Right. And me, I don't know what I would do. That's when it starts getting very philosophical. Like they have to find a purpose in life, but like honestly, they don't have one. In their life. And they're like gonna die no matter what because they're like, they're just trapped in space. I mean, this place that they go, they end up going to, it's what, like 9,000 years in the future it ends up being, right? Something around that. Something like that. I think the final one is 12,000 years. 12,000. So like, no matter what, they're not gonna survive. They're just trapped. There's really, even if you rebel, you're gonna die anyways. Like, what do you do? I don't even know yeah. what I would do. I would just, please don't. Just don't wake my clone up. Just don't. They were like, well, we're going to try and live as long as we possibly can. They held this little like ceremony essentially where they would each year kill one Ambrose clone and one Kodiak clone. They would just slit their throat. I think they killed all of them that same day, but they would send them off into space once a year. Oh. Yeah, because I think okay. they all had to be dead in order for OS to be like, okay, like they're dead, so I can't do anything about it now. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And th I think they were able to live for like 40 years or something yeah. like that. Pretty long. Kodiak died of cancer and then Ambrose ended up just like killing himself, right? He just like floated himself with Kodiak or something like that. Because they got to die together. Yeah, but they ended up living a decent amount together and they were happy and like they created like this ecosystem too on the ship. Yeah, like a plant on the ship. Yeah, when the last clones wake up, they have like moss everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a crazy concept especially just looking at the first half of the book and thinking like oh, okay this is like a little fun space mission book where you know the two main characters have like a slow burn love story and then the second half starts and you're like what the fuck exactly yeah i was like what is this like what is going on <laughs> there's just a bunch of crazy things happening i'm like okay it's gonna be a low i mean carlos have, was like it's gonna get dark and I'm still like, oh, I mean, cute. They're finally getting together. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, going crazy. Because Kodiak, I think, kills him, like, two more times, like, as a clone. At least one more time. Yeah, he definitely goes crazy. Because he just, I feel like he just, each time, still has such a hard time processing. Even, like, the very last one, because wasn't he like, I don't want to know about their other things. Like, they don't deserve me listening to them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even then, he I, he just has such a hard time processing, like, what they had to go through, or at least, like, what his clones had to go through and everything. One of his clones does it by accident. Like, Kodiak just has a full-blown, like, Menti B again. And he's like, no, no, it's sunny outside. We're just in a bunker. And then he opens up the airlock, and they just like, oh, my God. Yeah, that one was crazy. Yeah, he thought it was a test, so he wanted to get out of the spaceship because he thought it was just going to be like... A bunker. Yeah. Wild. Oh, and it's important to note the windows, because they were in a legit spaceship, obviously, but the windows were really just screens that were showing them a certain part of space because, yeah, Minerva was on titan the moon of saturn so if they would look out the window they would see saturn in the distance like in the close distance and they would still be able to see earth but really they were just screens and i loved that scene where they finally turned off the screens and they were able to look out and it's just black 
and like they see a bunch of stars and they see like kind of a weird looking planet eventually the one that they're going to land on so <sighs> what a wild ride this book was. <laughs> it's still probably one of my favorite plot twists in a story yeah it's definitely up there i agree it was also such a weird experience to read this book and have different uh, opinions of the main characters. Once you're with main characters for a whole story, you develop like mm -hmm. this connection to them, right? Right. But I feel like I almost wasn't able to fully do that with this story because although they're technically the same people, they were different versions of the same people. Yeah, I yeah. see what you're saying. So I didn't really feel super connected. I would say I felt more connected to Ambrose than I did with Kodiak because at least Ambrose stayed pretty consistent. And the book is mainly from his point of view as well. Yeah, so like seeing how he thinks and everything. But I never thought about that. That's so true that we don't really connect with like them at all. I mean, we they're obviously the same. Like they've all got they've got their same memories and things like that, but the way that their different personality traits come out, I feel like it's completely different people. Cuz at first I thought Ambrose was too whiny and like too like kind of how uh Kodiak was like, "Okay, pretty boy elitist like that's how I felt yeah. <laughs> but then throughout I was like okay I like Ambrose yeah because with Kodiak he was just such a you never knew what his clone was gonna do so it was harder mm. to like really fall in love with his character because he was different almost every time I like that some sometimes his clone was like sweeter like warmed up to Ambrose quicker and like he liked to cuddle a little bit too and things. And I was like, oh, Kodiak. Yeah, it, the, the romance was still very cute. It almost had like a grumpy sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it kind of was. Each the the clones had the same memories as OG Ambrose and Kodiak because they were right. able to like basically put like a code kind of a thing in their brain to where they felt like real people and not just clones like they had all their memories up until up until the launch and that was another thing right from the beginning that made me suspicious as well was neither of them could remember the launch and i was like i feel like this isn't just some like minor detail i feel like this is going to be really important i love how your suspicion just builds and builds and builds yeah that is good and the reveal you're just like oh like uh yeah i feel like the the author did a great job of like build up and like little clues and easter eggs of like what is to come so even though it was like super shocking it's like what wow that makes a lot of sense type of thing too like after you process because i also had a process that's why i think it's a good book to reread like i'm glad i reread it because i was able to pick up on those little things that second time reading it and I definitely found myself being like, I would do that too. Like the way that they would do the journals and write like, uh, do like video messages for their future selves, but they would do it in a way where it was like hidden within other things. Because like Ambrose, that horny little bastard, knew that he was going to try and jerk off. So he was like, I'm going to exactly. slip this little message in this <laughs> literal porn video. Like, Yeah. <laughs> so wild but like so smart so smart oh i'm so glad you liked it rose i was so nervous i don't know why but i was yeah and this th i'm having a lot of firsts on our podcast because this is the first sci-fi i've ever read oh okay like wow. i was not used to all of like the whole like space thing and you know reading about the tech talk exactly stuff like that so I actually, I thought I would be confused, you know, but I actually really liked it. I I felt like it was easy to follow along as a first sci-fi read. I think that helps that it's like written for YA. And I read like in the acknowledgments that he worked with someone at NASA or like that used to work at NASA um, to kind of create it. So I appreciate that it's oh. at least kind of accurate too. Yeah, it's definitely very mild on the science Normally, like, sci-fi is very hit or miss with me. Either it's very boring and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't need all this information. <laughs> like, I am not a scientist, please. But <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> not that I, like, learned anything because it's all fiction, but definitely yeah. made it fun. Made me feel studious. I feel like I need to read more sci-fi. 
I don't read enough sci-fi. Yeah, this actually made me interested because I, like I said, this was my first sci-fi book, which I actually, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of sci-fi movies, but the movies that I've seen that are sci-fi I really like. So I feel like that would translate into me liking sci-fi books, but I just never picked them up. But this did give me a little bit of like the Martian vibes though. I never read the book, but I watched the movie. Um, okay. But like, <laughs> it kind of felt like that too. So actually- I think I will read a little more sci-fi, maybe. We'll see. Were you guys satisfied with the ending of them landing on the the final clones, landing on the planet? I feel like I was. It was very action-packed at the end with them, like, crash landing and then, like, having to find Kodiak. He's, like, on the other ship. It was cool. I really liked the ending. And all the babies. All the The babies. Surprise, your clones. Surprise, your parents. (laughs) (laughs) How long does it take for them to realize that they have like the little pod of children? I think they're there for, I want to say maybe like six months before because they have to like get settled and like learn the ecosystem. I hate to say it, but very Ice Planet Barbarians, if you ask me. God. Uh, Take it uh... out. (laughs) (laughs) You know, crash landing on a strange planet, having to adapt. Just saying. What if Vectal's just like, what's up, guys? <laughs> no, not the blue barbarians, please. The barbs. Do you guys like that they named it Minerva? Yes, that was so cute. I think that was a good callback. That was very cute. The craziness and the action packedness of the whole middle of the book gave the ending such a satisfying ending because it's like all those clones didn't just go through that for nothing. You finally see the last two clones land on this new planet. They start up their cute little home from within the ruins of the spaceship and they're going to restart civilization. You should write a sequel. Right? Oh my God. That would be crazy. Yes, because it was so cute, like how they're like holding hands. There's only a couple minutes until like there's a baby. The little oh, baby yeah. pod opens. Ex- exactly. And they they like have already created their like nursery or whatever is going on. And they, they're just so in love. Yeah, the ending was very, very cute. I actually would want a, a prequel to this. Like I want to know what led up to all of this like what why was civilization ending like what was going on with earth you know kind of like like the 100 i watch too much tv as you can tell (laughs) me connecting all my books to television shows (laughs) and like i don't know ambrose can be bellamy blake what (laughs) maybe that's why (laughs) oh my god i did want to say my favorite quote or like oh. one of my favorite quotes. It was Ambrose number like 14 or something like that. And his quote was, your relationship with the ship will be different than any of ours. And I was like, oh, that's so good. Was it the second to last one? It was his advice to the very last set of clones because mm-hmm. he was saying your relationship with OS will be different because her goal isn't going to be to kill you. It's going to be to make sure that you survive this crisis crash because you are their last hope when they do get their os gets transferred into rover and she becomes like this little nanny oh, helper yeah. yeah and it becomes helpful and oh my god i forgot about that so good yeah trying to help them survive rather than like oh you're done you know s- swapping the floors <laughs> gotta go on to the next one <laughs> on to the next yeah i'm actually glad that like os was not actually evil, you know? Yeah, she just had a mission. Exactly. I thought it was going to be one of those, like, AI takeover things. So I'm happy, like, in the end, you know, mission accomplished type of thing. Like, she's like, oh, yay. Because it's it's tough to wake up being one of the middle clones. Your purpose is to be disposable, which is just such a wild thing to wrap your head around. It's so fucked. But so good. This book is so good. I'm going to start recommending it more. I will too. I think we uh, someone put a shelf talker on it. Oh, we should put it on the twist, the plot twist table that we put up. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's written like it's so I feel like the writing is actually pretty. Like there was a lot of just like even if you take the quotes out of context, there's just like pretty quotes like. I don't know. I have a signed book plate by the author. So maybe for this episode, we can do a giveaway (gasps) 
for a signed Ooh. copy of Darkness Outside Us. That would be fun. Absolutely. But I mean, yeah, even all of this being said, anyone that wants to still read this book for the first time, yes, you know the plot twist, but there are so many things that we weren't able to like go into like grave detail about please read this book it is so good it is so good yeah it's i feel like it's really hard to put into words like what you feel reading it on your own i feel like it's one where everyone can walk away from it with like a different view or maybe a different feeling about it right depending on what you would do in that situation because that that's heavy like the theme is a heavy one to unpack yeah like if i was if i was a middle clone i might just fucking kill all those clones and be like we're all going down bitches (laughs) (laughs) to know that you the weight of humanity is on your shoulders it's a lot i don't what and then you have to live alone for so long and then you have to be in charge of like recreating the population like that's too much for me because you'd think that they sent them up there because maybe they have tested them throughout a long period of time and they thought okay even if they did realize the truth they have a good enough head on their shoulders where they would still be able to take the mission seriously and not fuck it up for the rest of us that's why they would not be sending me oh no i'm too anxious for that well ambrose only got sent because his mom is like super rich no because she is the cusk she wanted like her blood to be in the new generation oh yeah that's true so really it was just like let's hope he's cool fingers crossed but i mean yeah he was still very smart i think he was trained very well regardless but definitely and if anything kodiak's like kind of colder upbringing more rough might have almost been his downfall but i think ambrose was just kind of like hey these are the cards we've been dealt let's just keep banging it out and being cute for as long as we can (laughs) and then whatever happens happens like let's let's at least we can take pride in the fact that we know that our future clones our future selves will be also together eventually so like let's be in love now and then we'll be in love later too and that's just so cute i love it what was your final ratings i gave it five stars both the first and second time reading it yeah i think it was it was just so good especially like for the genre that it's in it is a just phenomenal phenomenal book so yeah five stars okay okay no pressure okay Listen, I loved it. I loved it so much. And I recommend it to literally everybody. It, I would say for me, 4.5. 4.5. Because even though I loved it and I love like all the details and everything like that, you know, uh, I don't know if I can physically give it a five right now. Maybe I have to reread. I don't know. And also, I would have been satisfied with a with an unhappy ending as well. So maybe that's like was in my brain. I love the ending so much, but I would have been really satisfied if like it just ended. <laughs> they got to this planet and they like couldn't survive. They crash or like they die holding hands together. <laughs> No shot. That's so interesting because I usually don't like happy endings either, but I really like the happy ending in this one. I think I would have been like, I would have hated it if it would have been a sad ending in this case. I guess because like they worked so hard and then it's like for nothing, they would just die. But I think I actually would have, I would have liked that because I feel like it would have added to like the theme of what is life? What is life? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you're wrong, but sure. (laughs) But I, I mean, it's like, A very, very, very high 4.5. Like, I love this book a lot. Just to be clear, you have never given a Zodiac Academy book five stars, yes? No, I have never. I have never. That, I also, like, couldn't physically do it. Like, I could never physically give those fives. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, high praise for this book. Check it out, y'all. Check it out, (laughs) y'all. Were you Hannah Montana? (laughs) (laughs) thanks for listening thanks for watching thanks for coming on this wild ride and um as soon as this episode ends you're gonna figure out that you're just a clone oh dun 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 (laughs) you're gonna have to decide for the fate of humanity
It's not that spooky. Where can people find you, Carlos? You can find me on Instagram at Kingdom of Books. And you can find me on Instagram at Flower Reads A Lot. And you can find me at Lauren H. Wright on Instagram, as well as our podcast at Control Your Shelf underscore pod. Oh, and YouTube, if you're not already here. And all your streaming platforms, like like, review, subscribe, comment, all of those things, please. Thank yes. you. And keep an eye out for our giveaway because I've just decided yes. we are going to do one. So keep an eye out if you want to read this book, then maybe you can get it signed by the author. He's great. And that's it. That's all I got.